Hello everyone, welcome to Pathomad. Today let us study about the bullous diseases or the blistering diseases of the skin. Firstly, let us look into the layers of the skin. Skin has three layers. Firstly, epidermis. Second is the dermis containing the pilosebaceous units, the hair follicle sebaceous or the sweat glands. And lastly, hypodermis containing the adipose tissue. The first layer that is the epidermis, again it has many other layers. Histologically, first one is the stratum corneum. Stratum corneum is just responsible for the keratinization of the skin. Secondly, stratum granulosum. Stratum granulosum contains the granular cells. Cells has granules, and these cells give rise to stratum corneum. Thirdly, stratum spinosum, and last layer, the base, is formed by stratum basale. And all these layers of the epidermis, they rest on a basement membrane. And below the epidermis is the dermis containing the dense fibrocollagenous tissue. These bullous diseases can be classified into inflammatory and non-inflammatory conditions. Under the inflammatory conditions, we have our pemphigus group that we will study about in this part and bullous pemphigoid and dermatitis herpetiformis. Under the non-inflammatory diseases, we have epidermolysis bullosa and porphyria. Also, these blistering diseases can also be classified based on their location. Like all these autoimmune conditions, they are associated with the split in the epidermis. It can be within the epidermis or below the epidermis. So, based on the split, based on the split and the formation of the bullae, these can be classified into epiderm intraepidermal and Subepidermal. Under the intraepidermal, we have a pemphigus group, the pemphigus foliaceous or the pemphigus vulgaris. All the variants of the pemphigus fall under intraepidermal group. Whereas in subepidermal, we have this bullous pemphigoid, dermatitis herpetiformis, and epidermolysis bullosa, acquisita or simplex, and all this uh, dystrophica, they all this come under the subepidermal group. So, See, under the intraepidermal, we have pemphigus group. What does this intraepidermal mean? These are the layers of the epidermis, a stratum corneum, granulosum, spinosum, and basal. When I say it is intraepidermal split, the split is anywhere uh, between the layers of epidermis, like uh, between stratum corneum or granulosum, or between the spinosum and basal. So, uh, pemphigus group, like for example, pemphigus vulgaris, there is a suprabasal split above the basal layer. Whereas in foliaceous, the split is subcorneal, that is below the stratum corneum. And whenever I say it is a subepidermal split, the split is between the epidermis, are, these are the layers of epidermis and this is the dermis. So the split is beneath the epidermis, between the epidermis and dermis, that is subepidermal split. Firstly, we will study about the pemphigus group, pemphigus uh, disorders. Under the pemphigus disorders, we have the vulgaris variety, foliaceous, vegetans, erythematous, and also paraneoplastic pemphigus. That means any internal malignancy that is manifesting as a skin problem, skin diseases. Most commonly, it is associated with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And all these pemphigus disorders, the blisters, they are superficially located because these are intraepidermal split and hence the uh, overlying skin, it ruptures off easily and hence they lead to crust formation. Firstly, we will study about the pemphigus vulgaris which is the most common type. It accounts to almost 80% of cases and in vulgaris, like it is a wide group, it is uh, involvement of both the skin and the oral mucosa. Sometimes the pemphigus vulgaris, it starts off as oral ulcers and it takes several months to manifest as skin problem. And since it is an autoimmune problem, there is the formation of autoantibodies mainly IgG type against certain skin proteins called desmoglein 1 and 3. There is involvement of 1 and 3 here. We will look into the layers of epidermis. This is the stratum corneum, granulosum, spinosum and basal. The desmoglein 1 protein is concentrated in this way. Most of the concentration of desmoglein 1 is 
in the stratum corneum and as you go down the concentration decreases so highly concentrated towards the stratum corneum and as you move towards the basal layer concentration decreases whereas the smoglin tree the concentration is more in the stratum basal the base stratum basal is highly concentrated in the smoglin tree and it reduces as you move upwards so in the perfigus vulgaris auto antibodies are formed against these two proteins called desmoglin 1 and 3 Desmoglin 3 is the major target. Desmoglin 3 is most importantly targeted here, and hence the split is above the basal layer, stratum basal. So the split is called supra basal split above the basal layer. These are the clinical images of Pemphigus vulgaris. You can appreciate the superficial blisters that has been ruptured, that ultimately leads to crust formation, crust formation all over. and also this oral cavity involvement the oral mucosa is affected presence of oral ulcers when you look into the microscopic examination of the skin biopsy this is the stratum corneum which shows the keratin flakes this is the granulosum granular layer and the spinous layer here and beneath the spinous layer this is split between the stratum spinosum and stratum basal this is called a supra basal since the split is above the basal layer it is a supra basal split supra basal split and also in the stratum basal is the, uh, this is the basement membrane the cells are resting on the basement membrane a continuous row the cells project out into the split it appears like a row of tombstones tombstones these are the long elongated stones standing out in a graveyard these are the row of tombstones exactly the stratum basal appears like a row of tombstones and hence this is given a classical name of row of tombstones appearance row of tombstones appearance supra basal split and the row of tombstones classical for perfigus vulgaris we'll study about the perfigus foliaceus in foliaceous is involvement of only one skin involvement one thing skin and also auto antibodies are formed against only one protein that is the desmoglin 1 protein as we know the desmoglin 1 concentrated more towards the stratum corneum concentration decreases towards as we move down and hence the attack side the target is beneath the corneum and hence it is called a strat subcorneal split subcorneal split This is the clinical image showing you superficial uh, blister that has been ruptured off. This is the microscopic examination of the skin biopsy. It shows you the stratum corneum containing the keratin flakes, and beneath the stratum corneum there is a split. There is a separation beneath the stra- corneum, stratum corneum. It is called subcorneal split. Subcorneal split. Beneath the split again the granular layer. the spinous layer and the basal layer they are these three layers are intact only the stratum corneum is separated off from the underlying granular layer when you look into the immunofluorescent studies both this pattern both the vulgaris and the foliaceous they show you the fish net pattern or reticular pattern here you can see only the plasma membranes of the keratinocytes are highlighted here also only the plasma membranes are highlighted both of them show you fishnet pattern the difference that you can point out is in the vulgaris group there are splits uh, in the basal layer towards the bottom layer there are splits whereas in the foliaceous the splits are beneath the corneal layer stratum corneum and also most of the immunofluorescence this are highlighted in the stratum corneum layer whenever you send a skin biopsy sample for histopathological examination for uh, like a routine hnd and stains under light microscopy studies it can be sent in formalin all usually all the biopsy samples are sent in formalin but for immunofluorescence skin biopsy sample should never be sent in formalin because formalin itself is autofluorescent autofluorescent and hence it should be sent in normal saline For immunofluorescence, the skin biopsy should be sent in normal saline. 
Thank you all. In our next part, we'll study about the bullous pemphigoid, dermatitis herpetiformis, and epidermolysis bullosa. Thank you all.